On Good Morning Australia all week, we'll take a rare glimpse into a new Australian movie in the making. From the stark sets of Razorback being shot near Brogan Hill, you'll meet Gallipoli stars Bill Kerr and David Argue, Chris Haywood from Snowy River, and America's trapper John star Gregory Harrison as they all weave a chilling tale of love and murder in the outback. And of course, all the latest news and information, be early. Join us and the top stars on Good Morning Australia. Morning, Australia. This is an Eyewitness News update. Good afternoon, I'm Tim Webster. Politicians from all over Australia and both sides of the political spectrum have voiced their opinion on today's historic decision by the High Court to uphold the Federal Government's case that it had the right to enforce the World Heritage Properties Conservation Act and stop work on the Gordon Below Franklin Dam. We'll bring you the full story at six. Rail unions are preparing a submission to the State Rail Authority on the safety and health hazards of not having an observer on the XPT, which they'll present tomorrow, although AFU Early Secretary Bernie Willingale is not hopeful of a solution to the rail dispute at this stage. Those stories and more at six. Another update in half an hour. The Young Talent Team make a splash on Saturday. Johnny Young brings along his own model railway. Knock, knock. Who's there? Nanya. Nanya who? Nanya business. Young Talent Time, 6.30 Saturday on 10. Proud of the way in which, in world terms, we are a leader in children's television. And you, with your program, were one of the first to get the C children's classification. And what we're recognising in this uh, program uh, today is, is the thousandth uh, episode, uh, which marks five years, five days, and five days a week. And I believe that uh, you personally and all those associated with your program uh, are to be congratulated. Speaking as Prime Minister of this country and concerned with the future of our children, to be able to, to, to be associated with a program of such quality and uh, the, the things that you're doing, which are positive and constructive, I congratulate you on your thousands and I hope to be here to be associated with you two thousand. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's great. Welcome to my wonder world and welcome to this, the 1,000th show. And they said it wouldn't last, would he? <laughs> but uh, here we are, entering our fifth year of production, aired on most commercial stations across Australia, and 4,000 individual film stories on the screen. Makes me proud, doesn't it? <laughs> but uh, what I've got for you today is a show that's been extended to an hour, and it contains my favourite memories. Bits and pieces that I like, and I'd like to share with you. So please, sit back and in no particular order, a few of the magic moments that helped Wonderworld to reach its 1,000th edition. For instance, I'll never forget the time that we assembled a classroom full of kids, all with their missing front teeth. I want to make a world record. You want to make what? A world record. A world record what? Of having my two front teeth out. What, forever, you mean? Yeah. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. Carithmeth, <laughs> a 
lovely. And of course, those kids have all got their teeth by now, I hope. But uh, kids, they say that in show business, you should never mix it with kids and animals. But two enormous elements of this, uh, this little bit of show business have always been kids and animals. Hold it. All right, but don't eat it. Hold it in your mouth. Now, you only eat a little bit of it. All right. All right. Now you stop. All right, now you can have some more. Now you stop. All right, now you can eat it. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. This was a film story about Heidi, a courageous little Dutch hound with paralysed back legs. Her loving owners made her a two-wheeled harness so that she'd have plenty of freedom to get around. There's uh, Sluggo, has been scratched from the Daily Dabble and Shell Shock. Okay, race three, the animals are entering the boxes now. They're under starter's orders. Red lights are on. <laughs> See, even snail races. <laughs> we'll have more after this break. of six streets double chalk has a center of rich dark solid chalk enveloped in delicious chocolate fudge and double coated in more dark chalk that's studded with crunchy biscuit in take home packs as well streets double chalk rugby league stars peter sterling and mal meninga have just been challenged would you believe it by a kid to the exciting new game of pro yo it's a whole new ball game the yo-yo that's gone pro let's take a closer look at league pro yo notice how it comes back fast and easy to your hand he's got the ball he's away no he's lost the ball wait he's passed it to mal watch him move look at that action uh-oh he's down now it's up to the kid. Wow, look at him go. What power, what speed. There he goes, making the winning move. Pro Yo, it's a whole new ball game. Play it and you can be the pro. $2.99 at your local and coal news agent. Coles, Kmart, Woolworths, Target, Grace Brothers, JB Young, Walton's, David Jones and Toy World. Pro Yo, $2.99. League, soccer and cricket too. It's a whole new ball game. Be in it today. People uh, often ask me, how did you get the idea for Wonderworld? How did you get it going? Well, uh, way back in 1973, I was editing a children's newspaper called Zoot. And uh, after that, I went to work as a current affairs reporter with long hair. <laughs> and from those two experiences came the idea for a daily children's current affairs style show. And uh, this is a shot from my first pilot. It didn't have me in it at all. In fact, it had three compares. But uh, by the time that I'd made a second pilot, I was the compare. But first, a challenge. The people claiming some amazing world records in Thursday's program have been challenged by some con new contenders. We filmed them this morning. Take a look at this. I'd like to see a group of any 12-year-old people with 50 men that can beat a human pyramid like this. Oh, well, yeah, that'll be fine. Put you alone. <laughs> I tried to get the show on air for about six years, and eventually Network 10 gave it a try back in 1979. The rest, as they say, is history, including some awards that we picked up. Well, look at this. From uh, the number 10 network, it's Simon Townsend's Wonder Woman. <laughs> Simon Townsend, The winner, ladies and gentlemen, is Simon Townsend's Wonder World, Network 10. And then we won uh, an Advance Australia Award and various commendations and things, but one award that we were particularly proud of was this one. 
It's uh, for a film report by Angela Caterns on the damage that school bags can do to children's backs. And our story, we believe, helped to overcome children's prejudices that using haversacks was sissy. What would people say to you, do you reckon? They'd, oh, they'd say, um, sissy, bag, sissy, you know, things like that. I'm quite sure that some permanent curvatures of the spine result from this kind of abuse of the spine. And if the kids can appreciate that it's uh, better to wear a haversack and maybe not look very neat, then so much of this could be overcome. And indeed, a lot of that uh, idea has been overcome. But enough patting our own backs. Out there are some marvellous kids, and we frequently do stories on them. Between the lines of photographs, I've seen the past. It isn't pleasing. Lisa, how did you feel when you first found out you were losing your hair? Really, honestly, sometimes I felt sad and sometimes I felt, look, there's so many other sufferings in this world that it's really nothing. And, it, and now that it's going back, it's better. I noticed that you had lovely, long, thick hair. Did that make it any harder? I think it would make it harder for anyone when they had a tiny bit of pride in their hair, sort of like when you're doing dancing, you need long hair. And when I lost it, it was a bit of a shock at first. Oh, no sweat. Give us a brief history, Ken, of what happened to Grant. Well, the doctors, when they diagnosed him, only gave him three months to live. Right on the three month mark, Grant um, took very ill. Um, we rushed him to Blacktown Hospital, and uh, that only gave him 72 hours to live. And uh, another doctor came along and said that Grant was going to be okay, that he'd live. And that was uh, five years ago that this happened. I know there are people that can't accept it. We accepted, we were lucky. We've all different people because of what's happened to Grant, you know? We're more compassionate and we're more happy as a family, I think, you know? So on we go. His welfare is about concern. And his uh, welfare is indeed our concern. But the serious film stories on Wonder World have always been balanced by humour. In fact, once we even examined the subject of laughter. Can you actually laugh without even knowing you're going to laugh? Oh, absolutely you can. On your arms there's this funny thing called the funny bone. <laughs> funny bone. <laughs> Which is really a nerve going here, and when you crack it, <laughs> like this. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> It hurts. <laughs> it hurts so much, makes you laugh. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Sunday at 6, it's a real thriller on the Rank Arena Big Game when Manly Warringah tackles Eastern Suburbs in this weekend's Match of the Round. Their first clash this season was a torrid battle with no big pardons offered by either team. The Sea Eagles came out tops 22 to 8 with Sixworth and Rebo in killer form. Easts are a vastly improved side since then and their mobile forwards and super slick backs are more than a match for Manly. So get ready to grab all the action Sunday on 10. Okay, all you league fans, this is it. The most exciting place to be this weekend. In the crowd, at the game. Oh, it's just great entertainment. The people, the crowds, have a great time to see some great football. Rugby league, mate. It's top. It's great to be here at the game. 
Lux take it down at the board. See you at the game. We are the itty bitty teeny mini chunky molded oval teenies. New from oval teen and made it into crunch. Mmm, -hmm. munch of crunch and pick em, pick em. Chew em, eat em, you can't beat em. New from oval teen and made it into crunch. We are the itty bitty teeny mini chunky molded oval teenies. New from oval teen and made it into crunch. Play the Oval Teenies matchup. See how many Oval Teenies you get in the squares and win stacks of prizes. Enter where you buy your Oval Teenies. Welcome to my wonder world. Music. Music has always been an incredibly important part of Wonder World. We use a lot of music with our film stories and uh, for instance we show a music clip every day and we even make our own music clips and we interview uh, singers and musicians and all kinds of entertainers including these guys who imitate and do send-ups of the BGs. <laughs> Has this career affected you at all? I think it has. We are here. You are there. We're not all there. My limitations are the fact that I want to stay sane and have a relatively normal life. So I won't uh, compromise that at all. That's my limitations at the moment. And do you think there's a tendency in the business you're in to be slightly insane? Yeah, it can get you. It can get you. You can create your own image to such a degree where you start living it in personal life and uh, that's when you've, you've blown it, frankly. Why don't you Reasons make it to be bed? cheerful. Why don't you Reasons to be cheerful. One, two, three. Oh, are you being influenced by Australia? Well, what do you think? <laughs> Crikey, Moses. Do you like it here? Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Do you think you're going to immigrate? No, I just keep coming back. That's my story. Mm. I think if you personally, I'm a rock and roll gypsy boy, so I like to move around and keep on sniffing in new smells. <laughs> What do you think of the smells around here? It's barbecue. Whoa. Essence, a dirt barbecue. I'm, I'm personally a vegetarian. I like to smell the vegetables. They're over there. John, what is mime? Well, two things. Marcel Marceau does mime, and uh, there is also our sort of mime, which is sort of miming to recordings. We take a recording and give it expression and character and movement. So that it's not necessarily silent, all mime isn't no, silent? No, that's for sure. Oh. It's sort of a sense of um, portraying a character. Uh, hello there, Rock. Hello there. Uh, tell me, how, ma how many fights have you had? Hundred. How many did you lose? Hundred. How do you explain that? Can't win them all. <laughs> Well, what's the first thing you think of when you enter the ring? How to get out. And, and what's your trickiest punch? Left hook. And what's so tricky about that? I use my right hand. I love that. <laughs> but the stars weren't the only people that we dropped in to see. Just three, and her name is Annabelle. Now, another topic we're always looking at is crafts, making and creating. 
And here's two, sculpting sand and, would you believe, sculpting apples. Mama, mama, them whole papa Say them charge him for smoke and jack If me never jump to fence, them hold me too So tell me, mama, what you gonna Experimented with the uh, uh, other varieties as such as delicious mm. and uh, though they're lovely apples to eat they're just a softer pulp and I found that I might be going around the nose and if they'd knock off a bit easier but mm. Granny Smiths are a little bit more crunchy and more interesting. You can't do it with Jonathan's? Uh, no, Jonathan's are a bit soft too. Yes, I yeah. agree with that. Yes. <laughs> 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 Great sandcastles. <laughs> Our producers and researchers are always digging around looking for something different, for new stories about amazing things being created by people. But it's the kids doing something, making something that we've always had a really soft spot for. Excuse me, miss? Is that the way to look? Dip, 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 oh. Is that the way to look? Dip, 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 oh. Is that the way to look? Oh. Oh. Is that really the way that you look now? Dip, 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 oh. oh, darling, darling. What are you? I'm a hare. A hare? A hare. That's great. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Is that hard to do? No, um, it takes a bit of concentration and you've got to use your hand really finely and do every, every line really carefully. It took me about 20 minutes to do. Really? And makeup was also responsible for this character appearance by the amazing Jonathan Coleman. <laughs> Hello. It's not what you think, you know. I'm, I, I used to be a bank manager, but <clears throat> I suddenly did this makeup course and my whole world <laughs> changed somewhat. <laughs> Oh dear. In real life, of course, Jonathan Coleman is much, much nicer. <laughs> your blanket? Go and get your blanket. Alright. Put your blanket. That's much better. So this is um, us here, all snuggled up and ready for another day. So, see you later. <laughs> see you later, Jono. But you, please, stay there. We'll have more after this break. Good morning, Australia, all week. We'll take a rare glimpse into a new Australian movie in the making. From the stark sets of Razorback being shot near Broken Hill, you'll meet Gallipoli stars Bill Kerr and David Argue, Chris Haywood from Snowy River, and America's trapper John star Gregory Harrison as they all weave a chilling tale of love and murder in the outback. And, of course, all the latest news and information. Be early. Join us and the top stars on Good Morning, Australia. Morning, Australia. Inside every Kinder Milk chocolate egg, there's a milky white lining. And inside that, there's one of over 50 different surprise toys. Construction toys for architects. Telescopes for explorers. Tip trucks and tractors for builders. Dolls for little mums. And of course, for everyone, delicious Kinder Milk chocolate. So open a Kinder egg and surprise yourself. In its uh, constant search for new ideas and new subjects, Wonderworld wanders this wonderful world. Uh, we travel all over Australia nearly all the time and we take frequent overseas trips. For instance, Vanuatu, England and Hong Kong. excitement in Vanuatu takes place above the water. A lot goes on beneath it as well. In fact, Vanuatu has a beautiful coral reef where lots of tropical fish breed. Like the dolphin who guides you, you bring us beside you, to light up the darkness and show us the way. Strangers in your silent world To live on the land We must learn from the sea Your wife, 
I mean, there's six of them. We'll let you out. I'll be at the club as usual. Oh, hello. You know, there's nothing like being surrounded by some of the world's most famous and infamous people. And the place to see them all is right here in dear old London at Madame Tussaud. We are standing here. Charles, now, in English, please, could you tell me how much these uh, Chinese rubbish boats oh, cost? Oh, it's not rubbish, it's junk. Well, any kind of junk. I mean, yeah. there's quite a lot of them anyway. There's a lot of junk in this place. How much money do uh, the average Chinese people spend on a junk? Uh, for about 30 feet long, it's about uh, 80,000 to 100,000 Hong Kong dollars. 100,000 Hong Kong dollars? Yeah. That must be... One oh. 16... There it is, it's underneath 16. this. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job being a Wonder World reporter, I reckon, but sometimes, of course, it gets a bit hairy, like this time that Edith Bliss was uh, trying bareback riding at the circus. <laughs> A Jonathan Coleman was assigned the job of finding out about garbage men by being a garbage man. You had breakfast this morning? No, uh, no, Goodness no, gracious, no, no, no. Oh, what? yummy. That'll be all right now. Look, just tip it up in the truck, Brian. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Oh, Where's you know? the truck? That's Where's the right? truck? Just around here. Just watch out. Yep. Up. Uh, up. <laughs> it touched my hand, Mr. Foster. It touched my hand. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. But the characters the reporters have played have uh, always been matched by so many of the colourful characters we've had on the program. Big stomach. That's a pretty big uh, stomach you got there. Has that a lot of training gone into that? You work very hard on it. Yeah, a lot of eating and stuff like that. A lot of that. eating, big steaks. Yeah. Big. Yeah. Oof. You'll be back next year then? I'll be back next year. Bigger and better? Uh, bigger, probably. Batman, Batman, give me the gun. Are some gum leaves better than others, Walter? Yes, some of them are. That one there is a good leaf. Yeah. How do you hold it? How does it work when you play the gum leaf? So you blow it, the sound comes out over the top. <coughs> uh, the vibration. I see. <coughs> and how do you hold it? Oh, I hold it with the left hand between those two fingers. Uh-huh. And the your sound... thumb up the back there? Yeah, some of the back. The sound comes out over the top. Can you play anything else? Oh, I play the saw. Each note has a different place. So you have to know where you, to put the bow. You know, you've got to bend accordingly to run the scope. OK, Billy, here's your test. I want you to remember all these girls' names. OK, hit it. No trouble at all. Let's Michelle, hear your names. Belinda. Jane. Virginia. Maria. Annabelle. Debbie. Louise. Jacinta. Kathy. Cassie. Catherine. Mia. Kathy. Louise. Sonia. Peter. Natasha. Edith. Margie. Linda. All their names. They're all Go. lovely and I love them. Michelle, Belinda, Jane, Virginia, Maria, Annabelle, mm, Jenny, Louise, Jacinta, there's a nice name, and Kathy. Kathy, Cassie, uh, Cassie, Kathy, Mia, and over there there's, uh, do, 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 do. that's another Kathy, Louise, Sonia, Peter, Natasha, Annette, Margie, and Linda, the best looking one of the bunch. <laughs> you got it all right. Of course I got it all right. <laughs> it's fantastic. Billy Ward, the man with an incredible memory. More, much more, after this break. Tonight on Eyewitness News, the end of the so-called High Court Battle of the Century on the future of the Gordon Below Franklin Dam in Tasmania. But the reverberations will be felt far outside the courtroom at the ravines of the Franklin. From Canberra, we'll have reaction from Tasmanian Premier Robin Gray and Prime Minister Bob Hawke. From Brisbane, Dr Bob Brown, who's fought to save the river. And from the dam site, the workers have their say. That's tonight, Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock on Channel 10. <laughs> Paradise.
Paradise Gardens for a full day of fun for all the family. Open every day. You know, uh, we've had so many animal stories on Wonderworld that it's hard to pick my favourite moments. But here's a few, starting with information that you never knew about elephants. I mean, I heard this, I don't know if it's an old wives tale, but I heard that you can actually tell the height of an elephant by wrapping a piece of string or something around its leg twice. That's true, yeah. You should put a string around the bottom of its foot, around where its toe is, double it, and exactly the height of an elephant. It, it, that's dead set. Yeah, that's true. How big are, are they when they're born? They must be tiny. Well, they are. This foal here, she was 16 inches high when she was born. 16 inches? So just to give inches. you an idea. It's not much, is it? Uh, uh, that saddle fitted that horse. Oh, no, isn't it tiny? In fact, she was on the front page of a newspaper in the Sunday paper wearing that saddle. <laughs> yeah, so it'll give you an idea. It's yeah. absolutely tiny, isn't yeah. it? of them as babies though oh yes oh yes you can't call them animals because they're not they're, um, <laughs> the, to me they're like uh, hairy babies <laughs> <laughs> gorgeous hairy babies Wonderworld is essentially an entertainment program we're here to have fun but uh, we were very much aware of a responsibility to just occasionally present some serious stories with a message if you try. when crossing a road don't leap out from behind poles, trees or cars. Cars mightn't see you. Don't run across the road. You might fall and hurt yourself. Don't chase things onto the road. I mean, you've got to watch what you're doing. If you're crossing at a corner, be careful. Look all ways. Don't cross on a blind corner. And don't cross on a crest of a hill because the driver coming over mightn't see you. You can make it. If you try. This is about 3.15 p.m. on the 22nd of June. This girl was seen by Mr. Johnson, the owner of the store, in his store at Lidcombe. She was wandering about, looking at various articles, and he saw her go to where the texture colours were, pick up a packet, and slip them between her skirt and jumper. She then walked fairly quickly out of the store without endeavouring to pay for the item. Mr Johnson followed her out, stopped her, spoke to her. She went back into the store with him and he called the police. The detective went down, spoke shortly to the child at the store and she went back with him to the police station. Her mother was contacted and she came to the police station and the child was spoken to again in her presence readily admitted what she had done, asked if she had any explanation, said not really. She did it because other children had told her that it was easy to do and you wouldn't get caught. Do they all look as innocent as Sally? Yes. <laughs> really, it's just ordinary kids? Oh, yes. Yes. I mean, are the crimes as simple and innocent as shoplifting? Don't say that. What? Shoplifting is not innocent. There is no such crime as shoplifting. It is stealing. And that is the truth. I want to show you now some film of a four-eared cat, a featherless parrot, a two-legged cat, and a two-legged dog. Now, some people wrote to me at the time and said, 
Why did you show kids film of those kind of animals? Well, our philosophy here is that animals don't deserve to be, uh, to be put down, to be put to death, just because they look a bit different. And let the animals prove it to you. We've never come across another one that's got four ears like it. Well, what type of cat is he? He's a Russian blue Siamese. So it's the first Russian blue with four ears. How do you help a parrot that's lost its feathers knit its long johns? I saw an article in the Woman's Weekly. Uh, a woman from Jinder Lee had a bird and she'd knitted long johns and I asked if I could have the pattern and she said yes. And we've just gone on from then. And do you think it's a good idea that they wear them? Oh, definitely, yes. They look terrible without. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like chickens. Chickens, yes, frozen chickens. How does she scratch and how does she do all those sorts of well, things? Well, she can lick herself and wash herself like any other cat, but she hasn't got a paw on the front right side, so if you scratch her yourself, you know, she loves that because she can't do it herself. And not only that, the stump on the bottom, you know, moves. <laughs> yes, it's <a> stump <laughs> you know, movement. It's definite <laughs> stump movement. She chases rabbits, yeah. um, annoys the cats, runs up the horses, runs after the cars and is a good watchdog. There is just no percentage in remembering the past. It's time you learn to live again and love and laugh. Come with me, leave your yesterday, your yesterday behind. And take a giant step outside your mind. Zira. She's an absolutely beautiful dog. I'm a great believer that if children can learn tolerance and understanding towards animals, it can lead to a better tolerance and understanding of their fellow human beings. And uh, that means we sometimes present stories that show that some children have some pretty heavy problems. But one of the most joyous of all those stories was this one about a young girl with cerebral palsy. things that you'd like to do that you're just unable to do? Oh, I like to do here. I like to be able to play a sport that I can't, you know. What do you want to do with your life, Kerry? I just want to live like any other normal person in a normal environment mm. and have a good time. <laughs> you seem to be doing pretty well. Yeah. Well, what would you like to do when you're older? <laughs> would you like to have a job? Yeah. Um, I'd like to one day maybe get a job and get off the pension, have a proper job. What, yeah. what sort of pension do you get? In <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's terrible? Uh, <laughs> what? I'm no invalid. <laughs> She's no invalid. She was only 16, only 16. Lovely person, an inspiration, I think. But uh, just to show you that we <laughs> we seem never to get away from kids and dogs, take a look at this. This is my favourite joke. What goes around the kitchen floor doing 150 kilometres an hour? What goes around the kitchen floor doing 150 kilometres an hour? Alan Moppet. He absolutely loves it. You can't stop him skiing. He's a fairly old dog, isn't he? 12 years He's old. 12 years old in November this year. That makes him about 84 in human years or something? Which is a fair knock, yes. Isn't it time for him to retire? He just keeps right on going and I'm going to stop him actually soon from skiing at all because I don't want to hurt him or injure him in any way. He's a fantastic dog, isn't he, Woody? 
didn't you watch? <laughs> we'll be back with more, including a good look at the real hero of this show in just a moment. Rick Springfield is solid gold. So is Dolly Parton. Naked Eyes. Joe Cocker. Laura Brannigan. You better know to the of the heart. All on Solid Gold, 4.30 Sunday afternoon, when you're home on 10. He's left now, but the longest serving reporter on this show was Jonathan Coleman, who always had a quick one-liner. Yeah, here we have the uh, plain verst, the uh, garlic verst, and of course, the little bread verst. This is Dieter. <laughs> Come on, Lord, eating on the job. You know, after a big burst of the verst, there's nothing like a little hit of quickies, or even some schwiebel verst. You know, like, schwiebel ask the questions? Little joke. <laughs> you can't just finish in the middle of a battle. I've got, I've got to. I mean, this is this is just a story, right? It's just a story to me. It's a lifestyle you. But I know some people live in this area over here. Coleman, that's a World War II Japanese bunker. It doesn't matter. There's a housing shortage. People have got to live somewhere. Okay? I know. I know the Nakamuras. I've got to go and see them. Okay? Uh, come back, Coleman. Come back here, Coleman. I know these people. Little Reg Nakamura. I used to go to school with him. No problems at all. Hey, Reggie. Hey. You here? <coughs> Boy, when his wife cooks, she really cooks. <coughs> <laughs> Jono was certainly popular, but never as popular as the real hero of this show, the only television megastar in the world who does nothing and says nothing, Woodrow the Bloodhound. Once he was even sculpted in margarine. <laughs> Don't tell me it's a cat. And this is a dog. What's the dog's name? Udra. 